Um, I think I was muted for the first minute there, and I think I was muted by my own self. <laughs> so anyhow, what I was saying is that we are about to begin. Uh, let me give a nice introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here for SEA 2024 March. And who can tell me the exact date in March the exam is? What's the exact date in March? So anyhow, this is the number that you can use to contact me, contact the student hub. You'll have to WhatsApp this number, right? That call, WhatsApp. If you want to join our classes, you'll see a lot of these students here. Zavion, Gabriel, a lot of them are from the student hub are from our classes, either from my class, Ms. Celine's class, Mr. Manza's class. You can feel free to jump in. So if the video is fuzzy, you need to raise the quality. There's a little icon on the bottom right hand side, like a gear that you can use to raise the quality. So you raise the quality of the video and you'll be able to see us great, right? Um, remember to be sweet, like, oh, was a nice simile for that. Be sweet like ice cream in the, in the chats. Help anyone who needs help. Give answers. You, are feel, you can feel free to press the answer as um, um, type all the answers. As soon as you know the answer, you should have your book and your paper and everything, and you're ready to work with me, right? Um, students in our classes, they get the questions before we do the Sunday revision. This is, I, I think this is the third or fourth year I'm doing the Sunday revision. And we go every Sunday straight up till exam in March. And I'm seeing everyone saying it's March the 21st. So we are about to start soon. Maybe just a few more seconds. So if it's fuzzy, raise quality. Be sweet, like sugar, like ice cream, like cake like what are the other things i saw here like kick and remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet subscribe um, this channel is more geared towards secondary school not primary school students but we still do stuff at primary school but when you reach in secondary school this will be pretty essential for you and of course press like on the video so tell me how many how many people are on the live right now how many students are gathered here I am seeing 250 on my end. How, many, how much are you seeing? And then let me know how many of you all have pressed the like. If you have pressed the like, that means you're ready to begin. So you press the like button. You can feel free to share this link in all your class groups. You can let your class groups see. Hey, Mr. Springer, start up already. And let's get this first class in the record books. Let's get ready to go. I hope my board is working well because um, the internet that I'm using is not, I'm not in Trinidad, so the internet isn't the fastest. I'm using hotel internet. So I hope I don't encounter too many difficulties. Um, but we'll try to push it through. Next week I'll be back, so we'll have a really nice setup. So let's go. Right, the numeral 75007 in words. So that is easy. I'm seeing a 75 to start. 70 hyphen 5. And then the next non zero digit is the 7. So 75. This is in the, you all should have the answers there for me waiting. Hi, Juliana. Nice to see you. 75,000. I'll give some shout outs in the end. 75,000 and seven. Yep. And we have answers from Nikhil from, hey, how somebody put and five? Do you see now five day by Jaden by? What going on with Jaden by? Jaden, shake off that, shake off that. The hero also has the right answer, Zakia, Delisha. All right. Let's go to the number two. The number 256 is increased by 164. What is the new number? So the main skill being tested here is addition. And when we see the word increased, we know that it's addition. So we're going to add 256 and 164. 256 and 164. This 6 and 4 is a fact. That's 10. 0 will come here. 1 will go there. 5 and 6 is something that you know often as well. That's 11. 
but there's a one outside so let's put that to 12 let's bring this two here and carry up the one over there one two and one is four 420 a beautiful number and just like that we have two questions down look at your friend next to you and shake down and say hey yeah now start and we don't lock down two questions there buddy <laughs> it's certainly missing number so this is testing your knowledge of what type of numbers what type of numbers being tested here this tiny little two on top indicates that this is some kind of square um situation so it's testing your knowledge of square numbers and one number multiplied by itself is 169 you should know that that number is 13. you should know all your square numbers maybe up to 15. what number you know up to in square numbers for sure you should know up to 12 but try to learn up to 15 or 16. and if you're really good with that go all the way up to 20. right three and three fifths as an improper fraction so to change this is called a mixed number because it includes a whole number and a fraction joined together added together to make it to represent a number so how do we express this as an improper fraction in an improper fraction we want the numerator to have a greater value than the denominator and this is done by multiplying the whole number by the denominator which is the three by the five three by five is 15. three by five is 15. So we have three by five making 15. That product is added to the numerator. So 15 plus three is 18. And we have 18 and we put back the same denominator. And Isabella has that correct as well as a whole bunch of your Spidey Gaming and the Roach and everybody. So let's go on to number five. Two fifths of a certain number is 64. So how do we find out what the number is? So this is a popular little fraction trick. How do we work out this fraction trick? What is the technique being tested here? So if you have a fraction of a particular number, a whole, giving you that, to find the whole, you would need to do what we call, not convert, but what's the word we're looking for? Reciprocate. I saw someone say there, reciprocate. So we'll have five over two like this. And you can consider this still as 64 over 1. How many times can 2 go into 64? You should know that 2 can go into 64. You can see it, 2 into 6, 3, 2. So all that's left for us is to multiply 32 by 5. And I believe some of you all can do that mentally. Because 30 by 5 is 150 and 2 by 5 is 10. So 150 plus 10 is 160. Or you can see 5 by 2 is 10. Bring across the 1. 5 trees are 15 plus 1 is 160. So our answer is 160. We can put a confident 160 here and know that we have finished our fifth question. Woy, woy, woy. Five questions done. <laughs> Arrange the following numbers in ascending order. This is supposed to be cake and ice cream. Or you could share the cake and ice cream emojis there because um, ascending order is traditionally one of the easiest questions. Nearly everybody get this correct, right? But let's not make any mistakes. Ascending order means we are going up the mountain, right? So we start with the smallest, and then we end up with the biggest. So the smallest here has to be 2078, isn't it? 2078. Um, I checked the hundreds column, and I saw this, is the, this and this one is the only one at zero in the hundreds column. The first and the last have zero in the hundred column, but in the tens column, this has seven, this has eight. So up next, I'll put two, zero, eight, seven. And this one has seven in the hundreds column, two, seven, zero, eight. I didn't check the thousands column because all of them have two. And then we have two, eight, zero, seven, and cake and ice cream. Let's go on to number seven. So we finally faced with a division here. And our task is to get to the bottom of this division. So, because I know my 12 time tables, there's no number ending with five in the 12 time tables. I know that I'm not going to get a perfect number here. I would get a mixed number. I would get a mixed number or a decimal. So my approach to this question would be to see if I can get anything to reduce. Can I get anything to reduce? So I'm looking at it and i'm not seeing like i can get anything to reduce often and the number is not divisible by three how do i know it's not divisible by three 
when I add up to know if a number is divisible by three, you have, oh, it is, it is, it is divisible by three. I was, I was wrong. To know if the number is divisible by three, you have to add up the individual digits and I'm getting 18 when I do this, you could verify. And if the number that I get here is divisible by three, it means that the initial number is divisible by three. And I know 12 is divisible by three. So I can do a little re reducing before I go to my answer. I can say three can go into 12 four times. Three can go into four one time, remainder one. Three can go into 19 six times, remainder one. And three can go into 15 five times. How many of y'all did that first step? You got one, six, five, and you got four. So that makes it easier for us to just do a short division now, or maybe some of y'all will do the long division. So we'll do four into one, six, five. And this can also be done mentally because four into 160 is 40. Four into five is one remainder one. So we are already seeing now we're gonna get 41 and one quarter, but let's go all, let's go right to Four could go into 16 four times. Four can go into five one time. And the remainder can go like this. And then I'll say four can go into 10 two times. The remainder will be two, four can go into 20. So the answer is 41.25. Or I could have take, taken the remainder, which was one, this one, this guy here, this guy. And I'll be like 41 with a remainder. And I don't want to use the technique I say 41 remainder one, that's, that's, that's not acceptable at this level. So let's say 41 and put the remainder over the divisor so we can express it as a mixed number. So any one of these answers is acceptable. And if you understand type, I had a lock or I have, I understand that or any version of that, you can type it into the chat and let's go into the next one. Hey, the real given real fractions. 45, in case you can't see the, the, the mixed number here is 45 over four and we are being tasked with converting it. This is an improper fraction and we are being tasked with converting it into a mixed number. So this is simple, we'll divide. So I can say this time I'll keep note, keep track of the um, remainder, right? Four into four, one, four into five, one. Remainder of one. But what goes with the remainder, just like before, I'll put 11, put the remainder over the divisor and walk away knowing that we lock the max down. We lock the max down. So I want to take a little pause to go back to the first slide to remind those who just touched in what's up. We are, this is our first session in the Sunday revision. If it's fuzzy, you can raise the quality right there on your YouTube app. How many of you are watching this on a phone? Type where you're watching this. Are you watching this on a phone, a tablet, your laptop, your TV, your fridge? <laughs> in your car, where are, you watching, where are you watching this? If it's fuzzy, raise the quality. Remember to be sweet like candy in this chat. Be nice to people. Help them. God is watching you. Don't do any naughtiness. Um, subscribe, press like. And if your parents need to contact the student hub or contact me, you can WhatsApp this number. Like if you wanna join our classes, our private classes, we have classes every week. My class is basically full, but there's a couple spaces you could probably squeeze into in different classes of my class. And you can um, join the classes so you'll have early access to these papers that we do every Sunday and you'll be able to do them and get them corrected and see feedback and that kind of thing. All right, where are we? We are number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, we are number nine. So I'm seeing people saying phone, phone, PC, laptop, phone, iPad, phone, 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 tablet, laptop. All right. Mostly phones. Mostly phones. So remember, as soon as I bring a new question on the screen, you should be laser focused on the question and getting ready to go. We have 265 people here. Circle the number that is a square number. This is not a square number. I've never seen that as a square number before. There's no number that multiplies by itself to give 15. No number that multiplies by itself to give 32. No number that multiplies by itself to give 48. Another square number is really close to 48. Eh? Close, brother. You come close. You feel really. 49, 49. Yeah, that's close. This one was close to 36. This one was really close to 9 or, or 16. In between 9 and 16. This is the only square number. Tom spent $32 on a meal. 
which was one fifth of his total budget for the day. What was Tom's total budget for the day? So we did a question very similar to this. We the working for this goes like this. This is a this is a fraction question where you are representing a part as a fraction, and then you need to find the whole. So you write it like this: one fifth represent. When you put this arrow, it means represents. You can use this arrow. One fifth represents to the two. Our task now is to find the total or the whole. So the total is always found by reciprocating. In this case, we reciprocate the one fifth. So it turns five over one. Anybody else hungry? I feel it hungry, boy. So the two times five, I just start to work faster so we can get to eat. Five twos are 10, five threes are, didn't we do something just like this recently? We have 15 plus 160. I feel like we'll do this 160 thing just now. Anyhow, 160. I'll do some shout outs later, guys. I'm seeing some of them. So let me go a little faster because I am not the only one hungry here. <laughs> Write the total value of the bills and the coins shown below. So what I usually do is we call the from the biggest to the smallest. And this looks like a mental question, but let's be real methodical about it. Let's put the 50, 10, 10, 1, 1. 1 and 1 is 2. 1 and 1 here is 2 and 5. So I have $72 so far. But I also have 10 cents. I'm seeing a little 10 cents lime in there. So it's easy. I can put 72.10 because they want us to express it in terms of dollars. That's the best way to do it there. How are you finding it going so far? We nearly we, we, we passed the half mark in section 1. 6 squared plus 11 is equal to something minus 30. Well, this is called the LHS. LHS. Do you know what the LHS stands for? It's really a term used in secondary school. The LHS. That's the left-hand side of an equation. LHS. Left-hand side. So we, I want to work out the LHS first because the LHS has all the information. 6 squared is 36 plus 11. Who can tell me what is 36 plus 11? You understand why I'm working on the LHS, the left-hand side. 36 plus 11, mentally, I can see this is going to be 47. So now I need to figure out what number when I'm, when I, what, um, I actually short circuit there how to express this, yes? <laughs> I need to find out the missing number here that when I subtract 13 gives me 47. So because the number is on this side, the missing number is on this side, it's understood that I need to invert the operation to get the answer. We're going to invert the operation, right? So we invert in this operation, we get 47 plus 13, in, inverting subtraction is adding, and we'll get 0, that's 10. So we get 0, bring across the 1, we get 60. Now let's double check. Is 60 minus 13, 47? It most certainly is. <coughs> it most certainly is. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's keep going. Careful with the spamming, guys. Don't, don't do the spamming. There are um, admins in the chat and you spy the gaming. You are spamming. Spy the gaming. Or we need to take a little talk day. Or they talk to spy the gaming. This is spy the, spy the organize yourself now, man. You need to represent properly what is what we done. Spidey. All right. So fill in the greater than sign, the less than sign, or the equal sign into the box to make the statement correct. Hmm. So we have the left hand side and we have the right hand side of this expression that we need to figure out which one to fill in. So I'm going to work out both sides. 18 minus 7 is 11 plus 4, which is 15. You understand how I work down the left-hand side? Let's do the same thing on the right-hand side. 7 minus 4 is 3 plus 18. Hmm, that's a bigger number. I'm getting 21. So the bigger number is on this side. So it makes sense that I use the less than sign like this all the way up. So that's the sign that I'm going to use there because 15 is less than 21. When you use these, these are called inequality signs. When you use them, 
the side that is open always points the bigger number. And the side that has the point always points the smaller number. Yeah, you're always eating the bigger number. So what is 28% of 150? Excuse me, this can be done by saying 28 over 100 of is multiply of 150. And I could immediately say 50 can go into this two times and 50 can go into this three times. That's a nice big factor to simplify this. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh. Do you think we'll reach 300 people in today's life? I think we're going to reach 300. Amazing. Anyhow, 2 can go into 28 14 times. And I'm hoping that you all already worked this out for me. I think Sky and the rest of you all already did. Yes, so we have 14 times 3. 14 times 3, 2. Bring across the 1. 3 by 1 is 3 plus 1, 42. 42, you all already got 42. Let's keep it pumping. Write the digits in the squares below to create. So we can use these digits. These are the digits we are allowed to use. And we have to use them in these squares here to create an addition problem with the smallest sum. This is the most fantastic question we came across so far. This question is just gold. It's brilliant. I love this question. Well, they had to draw a heart in the paper with this question, boy. But do you know how to do this question? Did I make a mistake just now? Let me just make sure. No, 42 is correct, yeah. Well, you're trying to use these digits. Think of them as cards, and we're going to use them down there. And we're trying to figure out where to put what so that we can get the smallest possible for sum. Well, to get the smallest possible sum, it's a trick that we know, but it's, this question is phrased a little differently. We always try to put the smallest number in the larger place values. So you see the 2 and the 4? Let's put them in the larger place values. <coughs> and then we can put these here. So there are two possible answers that you can get. You can actually, well, actually four possible answers. You can tell me 26 and 48. You can tell me 28 and 46. You can tell me 48 and 26, which is just like this one. Or you can tell me 46 and 28. All of these will work. So any one of these will work. The main aim is just to put the smaller number in the larger place values because we want to achieve the smallest sum. And we weren't asked to figure out what it is, but it's 74. Number 16. On Saturday, Mark solved 30 maths problems. He solved four times as many problems on Sunday. So this is Saturday. He has 30. On Sunday, he has four times as many. How many math problems did Max solve on Sunday than on Saturday? How many more? Well, on Sunday, 4 times 30 is, what's 4 times 30? He has 30 here, and on Sunday, he has 4 times 30, which is 120. 4 trees are 12. One, 12. Hey, we reached 300. Celebration. I could send some celebration emojis. So the difference, because how many more? So it means we want the difference in the Sunday to Saturday. So you'll put 120 minus 30. Don't forget to work out the question in completeness. Some of y'all may have put 120 as the answer, right? And we see all other 120 is in the chat before as the answer. The final answer is 90 because we want to know how many more problems did he solve. What is the length in centimeters between L and M? So a staple question here, measurement question where we need to be very careful. We need to find where this is exactly. That's the starting point. It's always the ending point minus the starting point, and this is the ending. So if I put my expert decoding skills on here, I'm seeing that this is exactly between 65 and 66. So what does that mean? That means it's 65.5, right? And this is one, two, three up. And each one of these, from 61 to 62, there are 10 divisions. So it means this is really, the, the, the end was 65.5, but the start was, what was the start, guys? 61.123. 
Now the n minus the start will give us the length. Mira, so five minus three is two, five minus one is four, and six minus six is zero, so 4.2 is the length of, 4.2 centimeters is the distance between L and M. Let's keep it pumping. Identical cubes are packed into the box as shown. How many cubes are in the box? So <clears throat> let's check how much, how many levels do we have or layers? I can see we have two layers. So if I can count how many, you see that? I have this front layer here, and then I have this back layer here. So if I can count how many cubes in one layer, I would be able to work out the total number of <coughs> total number of these tiny little cubes in the box. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Five trees are all together. There are fifteen in a layer, and there are two layers. So there are fifteen times two equals. Everybody knows fifteen times two is thirty cubes. Oh, a beautiful triangular prism appears and it consists of two equilateral triangles and three. <coughs> three rectangles as shown below. Excuse me. How many edges of the prism have a length of eight centimeters? Well, this is an equilateral triangle. All the edges that I'm highlighting in red, guys. Do you agree that all the edges that Mr. Kerwin Springer highlighted in red has to be five, 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 five. So these are not included. But if I go and patiently share, try to get a new color, and let's say I get green, and I highlight these guys, this is it. This is it. This is it. <clears throat> Prisons usually form rectangles between their Cross section, cross sectional shape. So uh, we have three edges here, and that's what we are looking for. Number three is what we want for the answer. The tally chart below shows the different activities done by students on a Friday evening. Well, it's a Sunday afternoon. So our activity every Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. for ever, well, until March, <laughs> is Sunday revision, right? So organize yourself. Watching TV, reading, playing games, outdoor activities, name the activity that represents the mode. Well, the word that can be replaced by mode is most frequent, most appearing. So that's watching TV. So the activity that represents the mode is watching TV. How unfortunate. Do you know what's the most common mistake in a question like this? The most common mistake. It's for the person not to name the activity, but tell you the number of items in the mode. So people might put nine as the answer. You don't do that. Section one is finished. How long we take? We take basically 30 minutes. Gonna take a little less when I was talking at the beginning. So section one is finished. Congratulations. We are going into section two now. So make sure you all have pressed like on the video. Encourage somebody next to you. Say good job. I don't know. And take a little stretch. We're not taking a break yet. We'll see if you can take a quick break after section two. Get ready for section two. Where, where is section two? Section two, show yourself. There you are. Come on, section two. You can do it. How, how much y'all got in section two? Did I leave out something? Oh no, did I leave out? No, I didn't. 17 was 4.2. We have 202 likes, oh gosh. How much y'all got in section two? Most of y'all say 15 out of 20, 19 out of 20, 20 out of 20, 19, 19, 17 out of 20, 19. All right, so by the time we finish this Sunday revision section, 
section one, sorry, section one must always be 20 out of 20. 20 out of 20. Try not to lose no marks in section one, right? Okay, can I screen for all the questions? Write the missing digit in the, in the box below. So we are subtracting. Hmm. So there are a few ways to do this question. I did one like this on TikTok. Let's see if I can do the long way. 2 minus 5. Everybody back? Everybody done take the stretch? Everyone's back? Let's go. So 2 minus 5 is, ooh, what is, what is, there's a problem here. Let me draw my guy. We could call this guy a name, you know. We could give him a name. But for now, let me leave him nameless. Well, well if you let see name, boy. You see a problem here because the number that we are trying to subtract is, bit, you know, since we've seen a subtraction sign here, first of all, right? So the number that we are trying to subtract is bigger than the number that we have. That's a problem. It means we would have we would have initially have to borrow. Oh, not borrow, because we're never giving it back. We're taking it. We're taking it. So this turns to 2. And this is 1. So this is 12 minus 5 now. You all agree? So 12 minus 5 is 7. 2 minus 3. And next problem, he in vex now, because we, we encounter this situation again. <laughs> so... So 2 minus, minus 3, that can't work. So whatever we did here, we would have we would have taken one from this. Oh, boy, this is looking complicated because if we take one from this, right, and there's, there's, a, there's a way that we can use to finish this question, and I'll bring it up here just now, right, that we can finish this question faster. But I'll, I'll decode the question using this method that I'm using. But we can... Actually, add back these two and, and figure out that missing number. You know that? But what what in the world? So let's see if I can figure it out without adding back. So I have a problem here because this number is some kind of number that when I take, it's still less and I have to get one from this. So I'm sure that one goes from this and it goes to five. And you'll have one here as the digit. So you're missing a digit here. What? number in the teens when I subtract five gives eight. So if you have your addition and subtraction facts down really good, if you have your addition, you know that this has to be 13. Thirteen minus five is eight. However, this doesn't mean that this number was three. This number was initially four because remember I crossed out one from this number, it turned to three and then so that's a little complicated. So it may be safe for, for students to just add back this. So let's just add back 1, 5, 3, 5, 4, 8, 9, 7. <coughs> and see if you can get the missing number. 5 and 7, 12. <coughs> Bring across the 1, 13. Bring across the 1, <coughs> 9 and 5 is 14. Ta-da! And just like that, we would have figured out the missing number. <clears throat> Bring across the one, 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 and four is six. Notice how we get back this exact number there. So it's a question to examine because we have lots of students making mistakes in this question. It's a problematic question. 10 minus, so the answer is four and seven. 10 minus three and seven twelves. <clears throat> There's a few ways to do this. One of the most common approaches to deal with the whole number section and then deal with the fraction section. However, because there's no fractions here, and there's something that we need to do. So we have 10 minus 3, giving us 7, but there were no fractions here. This is 0 minus 0, because there's no fractions, and by the 10, minus 7, 12. And that's a problem. So what we do is we, we take one of this, we put, make this 6. You all remember this? And we convert this into a whole number, 1 but we use 12 as the denominator. So this is really 12 over 12. We brought it here, minus seven over 12. That's the technique. Type, I got this, if you know how to do that scale really well. You know how to do this method really well. Let's just repeat it again. So we watch the whole numbers first, the whole numbers, the 10 and the three, and I worked it out, got seven. However, when I'm looking at the fractions, usually there's a fraction here in the mixed number, and then there's a fraction there, but there was none there. So it's actually 0 minus 7 twelfths, which is a problem. So I had to take 
ladies and gents, boys and girls, I had to go and grab one from the seven, it changed to six. But that one that I grabbed, I, I express it as 12 over 12 because the denominator is 12. And 12 over 12 minus 7, 12 is 5, 12. So now that I have my answer as fractions and my answer as whole, I just merge them together as a mixed number and I get 6 and 5, 12, which a lot of you all are shouting at the top of your voice in the chat. Beautiful. Write the correct number, correct number in each shape below to complete the number sentences. It looks a little problematic, but we got this. Hmm. Um, <coughs> what is this testing? This is testing. This is test. It looks like it's testing. your knowledge of the distributive law. And this is testing your knowledge of the distributive law. So it takes me a little while to read and try and see what's happening here. But correct number in each shape. So we need to actually put the number in the circle and the number in the rectangle. Well, this is 29 times 50, right? So we know multiplication is re multiplication is repeated addition. So did I say 29? 299 times 50. So we are multiplying 299 times 50, which means it's like we're adding 50 299 times. So 299 plus some number multiplied by the same 50, and then we came and we subtract 50. Oh boy. So it's like we, we made one extra 50. So this makes sense that this has to be one. And then 299 plus one is 300. Just to be very clear, this is like 299 times 50. And we can consider this one as 300 times 50. And then we subtract back the 50. And if we take away one more 50, it's back like this is 299. So I think this is the best approach for this question. Yeah, I think this is the best approach for this question. So let's go to 24. John bakes 0 0.45 kilograms of flour to make one cake. How many kilograms of flour would he need to make eight similar cakes? So one cake equals 0 0.45 kg flour. How much is eight cakes? Well, this is a straight up multiplication. 0 0.45 times eight is, well, 45 times eight. I remove the decimal points. I will, I will add them back. Eight fives are 40. Four goes up there, eight fours are 32, plus four, so 36. Now I've got to bring back my decimal points, one, two, one, two, and 3.6. And you move to the next question. Hey, not 3.5, 3.6. How many of y'all got 3.5? Why we got, got so many people with 3.5? What is that? A jar contains chocolate and candies. For every three chocolates placed into the jar, six candies are included. There are 63 items in the jar. How many of them are candies? So believe it or not, this is actually a style of unequal sharing. So this style is using unequal sharing. <coughs> Um, but it's not specifically, this question itself is not specifically under the topic of unequal sharing, but this style is using unequal sharing. This technique is what I called grouping or division using grouping. So one group consists of three chocolates 
and six candies. In other words, one group is equal to how many items? Nine items. And that's the whole idea here. We'll get the group and we use the group to solve the question. How can we use the group to solve the question here now? It's, it's important that we think of it in one package, one group. How do we use this to solve the question? Now we have three chocolates and I'm seeing lots of people saying 42 is the answer. We have three chocolates, we have six candies. All together, they make nine sweets. Well, if there are 63, how many groups do we have? So number of groups has to be the 63 divided by the nine. Is that what you all did, class? 63 divided by nine is seven groups. So we have seven groups of these. So re remember this technique. Some of you all can figure out questions like these using trial and errors, error, but it's good to have the understanding of what is required, what technique you can use for this. And I, I call it grouping or division by grouping. So you have one group, three chocolates, six candies, you group it together, we figure out what how many items in one group. We divide the total by how many items in one group to find out the number of groups, and then that's it, we solved it. So we have seven, and in each group there are how many candies? Seven times six is 42, 42 candies. There are seven groups and in each group has six. So there we go. So I, I think this is one of the fastest and most logical way for a student between the age of 10 and 13 to work out questions like this, right? So Derek collects one coin each week the current number of coins in this collection is a factor of 60. Two weeks ago, the number of coins in this collection was a multiple of nine. How many coins does, he, does Derek have now? Oh my gosh, what a question. This was a problematic question for, for students um, in the homework. So every week he's collecting a, a, a new coin. So he's going to buy one every week. Factor of 60. What are all the factors of 60? Now this question is interesting because 60 is a number with so many factors. <laughs> do you know how many factors 60 has? One. Let's do them in pairs. One by 60, two by 30, three by 20, four by something. Is it four by 15? Yeah. Um, five, 12, six by 10. Look at factors in this number. What in the world? Did we finish all the factors there? I think we got all seven, eight, nine. So that is a lot of factors, you guys. So there, the current number of coins. So one of this, one of these numbers is how many coins he has right now. Two weeks ago, the number of coins in this collection was a multiple of nine. So what are the multiples of nine? I think my board froze. What are the multiples of nine? Nine, 18. I think I saw the answer already there. I think anybody seen the answer there? 27. The nine times table is easy. Number just keeps going down my one. Well, this, guys, watch, watch, you, watch your board. This level was two weeks ago. So it means I need to find a number up on the top that is two more than a number on the underneath. You seeing it? This number is 18 and this number is 20. That can work. 18 to 20. There may have been other answers. Maybe no, 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 no. 27 and 30 was so close. 9 and 11, 9 and no, no. So, oof. so how many coins does he have now? This is the now. This number up here is the now, it represents the now. So right now, Derek has 20 coins by Derek boy. A very interesting question. Very interesting question. 
So what is up, guys? Anybody has any questions? Please don't spam sir, 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 in the chat, Risa. I would have to ban you from the chat if you're doing that. If you have a question, you have to type your question. Okay. You all understand? Don't spam sir, in the chat. If you have a question, you have to type your question. So let's go on to number 27. Ria and Kelly estimated the answer to the following problem, 80 times 27. Eight trees, 24. Why did Ria come up with 16? Who is wrong? Explain who are the better estimate. I think Kelly is the better estimate. No, I don't know what Rhea did. I think I know what Rhea did. Rhea rounded. Rhea rounded. 27 down to 20, which is wrong. You see that? So Rhea going and wrong, only 27 to 20. Somebody said there's a mistake in number 24. Um... No, there isn't. Uh, so we are rounded down. We are going around long the thing, right? So 80 by 20 is 1600, but that's, that's, that's bad. Um, since 7 is more than 5. Or equal to five, more than or equal to, but let's just say more than five to be simple. More than five, then we should round up kt times tt is a better estimate. So we just need to be careful and make sure that we explain ourselves really well. Otherwise, we'll lose the mark. So like if you just say Kelly is the best, Kelly is the best, no one could contest. <laughs> and you didn't really give a proper explanation in going and get all the marks. So you, need, you should probably talk about approximating there. In a charity event, I know this one is tiny, so I'll read it for you. Especially for those who are on their phone. Three friends, Lisa, Mike, Sarah, collected a total of $145. Lisa collected 50 more than Mike, and Sarah collected 25 more than Lisa. So it's a solid unequal sharing question. So let's use the block method. We have Lisa, we have Mikey, and we have Sarah. Sarah. So Lisa collected 50 more than Mike, and Sarah collected. So it seems one of the one of the main things with um just a second i'm reading through the comments one of the main things if there's any mistake risa will check it back after right um, one of the main things with unequal sharing when you're using the block method is to figure out which block to draw first. And I'm seeing here we, we are given an interpretation of Lisa's score in terms of Lisa's money, in terms of Mike's money, and Sarah's money in terms of Lisa's money. So it seems like Mike is the first one I'll draw a block for. Because nothing was given with Mike. So Mike has a block. Lisa has the block plus 15. Sarah has 25 more than Lisa. So Sarah has what Lisa has, which is a block plus 15, plus an additional 25. So one of the main skills with unequal sharing is knowing how to remove excess when you're using this method. So we want to remove the excess so that we can get equal sharing. And when we have equal sharing, we can divide. So removing the excess 
I will say the total is 145, and I must minus the sum of all the excess. 15 and 15 is 30, and 25 is 55. If I subtract 55 from this, do I get 90? If I go in good so far, tell me. Am I going good so far? If I go in good so far, say, so you're going good so far. So this is the new total. This means that one, two, three blocks, the equal shares represent that. So three parts or three blocks equal 90. So finding for one is a division operation. So 90 over three will tell me that I have 30 as the value of one of these. And I, lo and behold, that helps me completely solve the question. Because now I know Mikey has one block. Mikey Mike's has one block. So Mikey has 30. Lisa has a block plus 15. 30 plus 15 is 45. And Sarah has 30 plus 40 is 70. Hey, 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 why some people are 75? Is 75, did I make a mistake? 15, 25, and 30. Are you organizing yourself? It should be 70. Are you adding up in your, in your mind and you make a mistake? All right, the cost of a sheet is twice the cost of a pair of socks. The total cost of three sheets and four pairs of socks is 240. What is the cost of a pair of socks? So one sheet. I like my shirt day. That shirt ain't looking too good. I feel like I do a little better. One shirt or the other shirt here. One shirt. Is equal. To two times. The cost of a pair of socks. Oh gosh. Because remember a pair of, a pair of socks means you have two socks. right? <coughs> so one shirt is twice the cost of. A pair of socks. The total cost of three sheets and four pairs of socks is 240 or a pair of socks. Well, let's put everything in terms of socks. Four pairs of socks, three sheets. What three sheets really represent? Six pair of socks. Oh my gosh, I think I just figured out the question. Three sheets really represent six pair of socks, right? Because one sheet come like you buy two socks, two pair of socks. So three sheets come like you buy six. Uh huh. You understand what I mean? So I get everything in terms of socks, Alia. I am getting everything in terms of socks. So three sheets really stand for six pair of socks in terms of value. And then we already have four pair of socks here. So really, I have spent the equivalent of four plus six. I have spent 10 pairs of socks. And these 10 pairs of socks, equals $240. Well, so how much is one pair of socks? Finding for one is a division operation. So you're gonna divide 240 divided by 10. Beautiful, divided by 10 is easy squeezy thing. So we get our $24. Wow, they give us three marks for that. I find that is healthy marks, boy. Yeah, boy, three marks for that, yeah. That is some sweet marks, dude. So number 30 is this question where we need to find out how many circles form the ninth element. So what I will do one time as I jump into this question is write how many elements in each one. So I think this one has one, two, three, four, four. Should I get my red pen? I feel that will stand out more. I feel the red would stand out more. So we have four here. And then we have four plus Five is this nine? You all help me count it. So you have nine here. Oh my gosh. And then what we have here. Four. Nine and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixteen. These numbers are looking very familiar. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then you have sixteen plus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh. I know this. I know this series of numbers. Y'all stop and watch this series of numbers. Do you know this series of number? What are these numbers? Who comes next? 
there are these square numbers. Two by two is four, three by three is nine, four by four is 16, five by five is 25, six by six. Oh, they didn't want to know who comes next. Well, let's just keep going. They want to know who comes on the ninth one, guys. We want to know quite to the ninth. So let's just keep going. 36, 49. We're going down with square numbers line, right? 64, 81, 100. Let's count and make sure that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the ninth element. It's really, it's really 10 times 10, but it's the ninth element because we started on four. The first square number is actually one, but we didn't have one. So you understand? A little tricky. I know some of you all might be thinking, the ninth element, nine times nine is 81. No, 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 no. You actually have to count down this and you realize they're really looking for the 100. Stay the pattern rule. So the pattern rule is add one to the element number and then square it. So that's one way of representing the pattern rule. Another way of representing the pattern rule is by saying it's a series, it's the series of square numbers. Starting with four. If you just said the pattern rule is square numbers, you will lose max. Because you have to see where it starts. It starts with four because one isn't in the pattern. You understand? So, or we could add one to the element number. The, this is the first element. If I add one to this, I'll get two and I square it and I'll get the answer. Two plus one is three squared is nine. Three plus one is four squared is 16. Four plus one is five. Five squared is 25. So, we could either have this add one to the element number and then square it, or it's a series of square numbers starting with four, four, nine, and so on. Four, nine, 16, and so on. What's next? The clock in Jamaica shows the time 3.30. The clock is 20 minutes fast. The time in Jamaica is one hour behind the time in Trinidad. What is the correct time in Trinidad? So Jamaica is up there. Then we have who? The Greater Antilles. We are Cuba hunting up there. We are Haiti up there somewhere. Thing coming down here. All these are like Trinidad down here. Tobago here. Barbados up in the corner. <coughs> up in the corner. They... <coughs> Excuse me. So one thing that you should know if you're living in the Caribbean, is that, let's say Trinidad sees four o'clock. Let's say the time in Trinidad is 4 p.m. Guess what the time is in Jamaica? The time in Jamaica is 3 p.m. Trinidad is one hour ahead from Jamaica. Or if you see it in terms of Jamaica, Jamaica is one hour behind Trinidad. And that is true. This question is actually true. That is true. That is true. That is real. If you call your friend in Jamaica right now and you ask them what is the time, they will tell you 12.59. All right, so let's go. The time in Jamaica is one hour behind the time in Trinidad. What is the correct time in Trinidad? And the clock in Jamaica shows that the time is 3.30. The clock is, let's fix this clock first. It's 20 minutes fast. If a clock is 20 minutes fast, that means it's reading the time ahead. So the real time is 3, 3, 0, and we'll have to subtract. So it's really 3, 10 in Jamaica. But remember, Jamaica is one hour behind Trinidad. So what is the actual time in Trinidad? The actual time in Trinidad has to be one hour ahead. So you'll have to go 3, 10 plus 60 minutes or plus one hour, which is 4.10 p.m. 4.10 p.m. Well done, guys. And I saw a lot of you already that answer from the word go. Complete the shape on the grid below using A, B as the line of symmetry. Oh, yes. This is the beautiful part. Put a little dot there. Put a little dot over there. Over there. Put a dot. Let's put a nice little dot there and there and there and there and there. And uh, lovely, lovely. Y'all know what I, y'all know.
you all know what I did there? I put a little point to represent all the vertices. So like I saw one, two, there's a vertice here. So I went one, two, and put it. One, two, three, four. That's this guy up here. So I put his representative down there. And I did for all the points. So now I connect to... So anybody from Jamaica, what is the time? It should be one o'clock in Jamaica right now. Chantel, you from Jamaica? In Trinidad, the time is two o'clock, actually, just in 201. I'm in Atlanta right now, Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States. And time here is also the same time in Jamaica, two, um, one, 101. So I want to tell you all something. You all notice I use freehand to draw this. Please do not use freehand to draw this in the exam. You should have a nice clear ruler, a plastic ruler, a clear ruler, or a see-through ruler, um, acrylic or whatever. The ruler must be see-through. So it, it's, it's, it helps. It helps a lot. And you just draw it using straight lines, neat lines. Don't go and run a line like this for the people them in the exam, please. Try not to do that, right? So you can, you can please make use of my method that we verify the vertices first, and then you draw the lines to connect them. How many of shape K are needed to fully cover shape N? <sighs> this is a tough question. Now, this question may be a little outside of your scope. A little outside of your scope. It may be a little outside of your scope. So I will I would actually accept two answers for this question from a student. So let me show you what I mean. Because this is using the area formula. We can use the area formula and we can say that the area of this is five by five. So as I said a little outside of the scope right now for SE. And the area of this is 25 times 41. Multiplying 25 by any number, you just add two zeros and then you divide by four. Four could go into four, one, four could go into 125. So the answer is 1025. So you have 1025, and then you want to see how many times 25 goes into 1025. So shapes needed. So this answer is technically correct, but um can have an issue with this answer as well. So 1025 divided by 25. So 25 goes into 104 times. So 25 will go into 1,040 times and 1, so 41. But uh, I have a little problem accepting this answer. So an even better answer, but I will still give that answer correct. But I, I'm, I don't envision a question like this coming in SE. It may come with whole numbers, but it's nice to think about it. So remember, we'll have squares. Draw pencil, draw. My pencil doesn't want to draw the next method. Sigh. Pencil, don't give up now. I'll give a pencil some encouragement, Dana. All right. I'll have to do it on a new sheet of paper, but just, just hang on a little bit. Because um, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, this, is, uh, this number is divisible by 5. So we get 5 squares being able to fit here. But 41 is not divisible by 5. It means that when we reach 40, there'll be 1 centimeter hanging over here. There'll be 1 centimeter remaining. 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter, 1 centimeter. 5 times that will happen. So we will have 40. When you get all these squares, you'll see there'll be 40. And then there'll be these one centimeter slips, five of them. And that would require you to see 45 squares. So if a student discover that and come up with 45 as their answer, that's actually better. better. I have to block someone. Y'all, please don't use any um, 
curse words in the chat. Write things in the chat like if God watching you. Right, so <laughs> um, so you have 25. So 45 is, a, is another answer that I think is really good for this question. So let's, let's move on. Six identical rectangles are placed as shown in the figure below to form a square, PQRS. So usually the naming of squares go in a circular pattern. So we would see this as S and this as R usually. All right, but for now, let's see what's happening here. Just break normal naming procedures. Six identical rectangles are placed in the show in the figure below to form the square. Oh, identical rectangles. Calculate the difference in the perimeter of one rectangle and the perimeter of the square. Well, if this is 48 and this is divided by 3, can you tell me what this is going to be? I love this. I love this question. So 48 divided by 3, 3 can go into 48, 1, 1, 16 times. Is this 16? Am I correct, guys? Is this 16, 16, and 16? We want to get the perimeter of the rectangle, right? And then 48 divided by 2 would give me <coughs> what's happening with the length of the rectangle. 48 divided by 2 is 24. So it makes sense that this is 24, 24, and so on. So how do I find the perimeter of a rectangle? So the perimeter for the rectangle will have to be 2 times the length plus 2 times the width or 2 times 24 plus 2 times 16. 2 times 24 is 48, we already knew that, and 2 times 16 is 32. So what's the perimeter of the rectangle? What's the perimeter of the rectangle? I'm just taking a look at the comments here. So. One of the questions we get asked a lot in the first session is what time the class goes in, what time the class goes in. I want to tell you here today, uh, let me tell you what time the class goes in. Listen, listen, come close to your screen. Come, come, come. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I can't answer. I don't know what time the class is closing. The class closes when we finish. Forever and ever. The class will close when you finish. So you should know how long a maths paper takes or how many questions there are in a maths paper. When you finish the maths paper, we finish. So if you go back, you can watch the past sessions that we did last year and year before and thing, and you can see what time we usually close. So 48 plus 32 is 80. Uh, what's the whole perimeter of the square? Perimeter of the square, the large square, Perimeter of the large square is 48 times 4, or 4 times the side, right? 48 times 4 is similar to like 50 times 4. 50 times 4 is 200, but this was 2 less, 4 times. So what's the perimeter of the whole square? I think it's like 192. Is that correct? And now... All that's left for me to do is get the difference between the perimeter of the one rectangle and the perimeter of the square. They should have write the square first and the rectangle. So it's 192 minus 80. So you have 2, 1, 1. So 1, 1, 2 centimeters. Nickel, stop spamming. 1, 1, 2 centimeters. Let's go. Number 35. Emma's backpack was initially over the limit by three kilograms after removing her laptop. And this reminds me of a question I saw in a paper. Two textbooks of equal mass. <coughs> the backpack was below the limit by 2.2 kg. When she puts back the two textbooks, the backpack was already limited by 200. What is the mass of the laptop in grams? Wow, what is going on with this question? So initially, let's call, let's put this line as the limit. In the first situation, she had three kilograms over. Then she removed a laptop and she removed two textbooks. Now, this is the line that is the limit. 
Let's be low the limit by 2.2 now. Oh my gosh. And now she when she puts back the two textbooks, it goes over, what a question, by 200 grams. It's just over by 200 grams. So this question requires us to think really deeply because she added back the two laptops here, right? No, she added back the two textbooks. She added back the two textbooks. So I'm seeing a way to figure out the mass of the two textbooks, guys. You'll see now we have to figure out the mass of the two textbooks because when we had no laptop and no textbook, it was 2.2 kg underneath, but when we added back the two textbooks, it came 200, k 200 grams above. By the way, 2.2 kg is like 2,200 grams or 2,200 grams, right? So the two textbooks has to be, this is not a subtraction situation, this is an addition situation. Be careful with this, eh? 2400 grams because with all the textbooks it was 2200 grams below add back the two textbooks it fills up that gap of 2200 and adds an additional 200 so it's 2400 grams okay we're getting close so this is where it's at with two textbooks but if we add up the laptop, go back to the first scenario, it goes all the way to 3 kg. I feel like this question with four marks. <laughs> it goes all the way to 3 kg. So what is the difference here? What is the difference between 3 kg? Oh, I, I probably didn't need to with all this. Anyhow, what is the difference between this 3 kg and 200 grams? Well, I can I can see three thousand kilograms, and I minus the two hundred, and I get twenty eight hundred. That's twenty eight thousand Kelvin. Twenty eight hundred grams. That has to be the mass of the laptop. So I actually didn't need to record this part, but I feel like this question had a lot of potential for lots of different tricks. And we saw something similar to this happen in either last year's exam or the year before, where I think it's last year, where we made use of this neutral point, the limit. So it's an understanding of directed numbers, numbers that go over and under a limit, and how we approach questions with that. Number 36, the incomplete table below shows Sarah's marks in four subjects. Sarah's mean mark was 75, class score. So always at mean questions, we're trying to find the total. To find the total, we use the mean and we multiply by the um, number of items, or we can sometimes use the word frequency, or the number of items sounds a little better for you all at this level. Number of subjects in this case. So the mean is 75. There are four subjects. 75 times 4 is what number? Three hundred, right? Seventy-five times two is one fifty. One fifty times two is three hundred. So we have three hundred. So that's the total. So so far, we have eighty-five plus sixty plus seventy-two. That's all the subjects. That's all Sarah's marks so far. So so far, Sarah's seven. Um, eight, six, and seven is basically seven times three. So that's twenty-one. So so far, Sarah Sarah has. 217 marks so far guys but our total mark is 300 so it means the physics missing the missing mark here for physics is 300 minus 217 and i'm seeing y'all worked out that already to be 83 83 nice going so this is one of the this is probably the most popular question where the word mean or the word average involved Make sure you know how to do this. The key is figuring out the total and how much we have so far. Let's go on to, oh, section two. Finished. We are going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, we are going into, going into the final section. All right, so take a run around the house day. One pet your dog. 
or your cat or your goldfish. You want to drink some water? And let's get ready for this final section. We'll be back in two minutes. And meanwhile, I'll put the number on the screen, 472-4221. Of course, you use the Trinidad area code 868. If you want to get in contact with the student, have joined classes, secondary, primary school classes. We have all the online lessons available. We are very good at what we do in online lessons, and we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, hundreds, maybe thousands of testimon testimonials of students who have been successful. So you all could feel free if you need to have a good solid lessons um, in any subject to WhatsApp this number. WhatsApp that number and join up the class. All our classes are 300 per month. So our break is now about to come to an end. Let me do some shouting out. Andrea Springer, I think that's my cousin. <laughs> Jumal, Akila, Zavad, Elijah, Okay, uh, Jemaya, Ayende, Rovin, Jahim, Avian, Yep, Alessia, Jasmine, Sidi, Oshari, Jahim. Y'all have to have your name on it. And I, some of y'all have some really weird names. I can't say those names. Sky, Elisha, you don't have the actual name. You have some kind of code name or gaming name. Y'all have your gamer name. Nikhil, like this person's name is Royal Castle Lover. <laughs> Royal Castle Lover, Aria, Liam, Gabriel, Saloni, Manuel, Alexia. Hi, Alexia. Nikhil, how much times I will shout you out by Vedan, Kestra, Josiah. All right, our break is up. So type break is up. Let's go. Or type let's go in the chat and let's get this last quest last three questions done. Just like that, we will finish our first session, first Sunday revision session. I'm erasing, I'm erasing, I'm erasing, I'm erasing, I'm erasing. Let's go. Let's go. So Sophia bought an equal number of floor pots and garden tools. All right, Sophia, you're buying your pots and garden tools. She spent 260 How many garden tools did Sophia buy? Oof. How are we going to do this question? So once again, we need to make use of the idea of grouping. So what, what ideas do you all have with this? So every, um, every grouping of floor pot is 15. Every grouping of garden tools is 35. However, this is for two, and I want an equal amount. I want an equal amount of floor pots to garden tools. So I'm seeing it may be useful to find out how much four flower pots cost, right? Four flower pots will be, well, if two for 15, it'll be 15 times two, it's 30. And four garden tools, shovel, and pliers and wall and leaf cutter, or whatever, whatever it is she buying this. $35. Ray canting. So the group where we have four floor pots and four garden tools is 30 plus 35, which is 30 plus 35 is 65. $65. And this represents eight of eight, eight of everything, eight items. So let's find out the number of groups now. Just like before, you all remember we did a question like this? 
this one is just a little more troublesome, but it's the same idea. The number of course, the number of groups is 260 divided by 65. So I want to take my time with this. I know 13 can go into this because how much is 12 fives, guys, guys, boys and girls? 12 by 5 is 60. So 13 by 5. So I know 13 can go into this, and I could see 13 can go into 26 as well. But just in case you didn't know, I'd have been like five into this is 13. Five goes into this how many times, boy? Five. We mean that 152. And then 13 into 13 is one. 13 into this is, is it four? Yeah, four. So we get four groups. I run out of space, Ali. I run out of space. Is it okay if I would do the rest of the question right in this little corner here, boy? Running out of space. Mm. All right, so four groups. And each group has four garden tools in them. So the number of garden tools... I keep writing hashtag for number. That's one thing I used to do back in the days. Number of tools would be four in each group. And there are four groups. Four times four is 16 tools, 16 garden tools. Just like that, we, finished, we figured out the question. Make sure I did that correct. 16, yes, 16 garden tools. So hopefully you all figured out an idea with grouping. is an idea with sharing where we need to use that kind of um, grouping up the each package idea. All right, so let's keep going. The larger box contains cubes of equal size. Each cube is two centimeters and outside. How many cubes are in the box? How many cubes are in the box? Jeez, and ages, they real cube to count here, boy. We have to assume that cubes we can't see behind other cubes are packed there, right? Each cube on top of each other. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's one in this side here. You don't feel I see him there, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then there's 17, 18, and one down in the corner there, 19. And let's check this one. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. How many of you all got 24 cubes? Did I count that correctly? Let me try again just to make sure. Because I smell like a make a mistake. This time, let's count everything. Let's not skip out any. One two, and there's one behind this, right? You, we can't see it, but we have to assume there's one there. So that's three. Four, there's one behind there, that's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and there's one down in the corner there, that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. How did I get 24 last time? I have to watch over this live and see which one I counted twice. So it's 23. It's 23 cubes. Wow. One mark. I feel like they could give you five marks for that because that was some intricate counting. Okay. So what's the next thing? How many cubes of the same size are needed to fill the box? Well, let's find out how much will fill one, one face. It's one, two, three, four, five up. One, two, three, four. Five up and three across. Three across, right? So five trees is 15. And how many can fit this way? Well, remember, each cube is two centimeters and there's 18 here. So I think I can get nine this way. So each layer is 15. You all agree with me? Each layer of cubes that we will have is 15, 15 blocks, 15 cubes, and there can be nine of these possible layers. So, number of cubes. What an interesting question. 15 times nine. Who can tell me what is 15 times nine? Yeah, so 15 times nine will be 15 less than 150. 135 cubes is the answer so it's 23. so i'm seeing this question has a lot of people with different answers boy we so we have 135 cubes so all right now yeah 
But a lot of people was thinking it's 24, it's 23. I, I don't know I'll get 24 before. I don't know why I get 24. I need to check over and see what I counted to get 24. So double check this, right? How many cubes are the same size I needed to fill the box? So you have 135 cubes in the whole box, 23 so far. So we need... How many more cubes right here? So we need 135 minus the 23, which is three from five is two, two from that is one, one. 112 cubes is the final answer there. Oh geez, let's keep it going. Finally reach down to this drawing thing. So all this question was just counting up cubes and things was pretty tricky. And I find this question was tricky. Number 39, Jenna draw, drew a six-sided shape with two right angles. Right angles look like this, 90 degrees, right? A quarter turn. Two sides of the shape are, are shown. How many sides of the shape have? Six sides. Oh, I'm seeing what to do. Complete the shape by joining some of the dots for two marks. So when you have to, if you are in SE and you have to complete a shape and make a right angle, you're always looking for dots that create that kind of corner situation. Can you see dots that do that here? This is one. And this is another one here. So we have a right angle there and a right angle there. Now you have to use your ruler. So you have one, two, three, four, five. And I just need to join these two and I made my six-sided shape. There we go. It's an irregular shape. Let's go. Keep the shout outs to the end. Describe all the interior angles in the shape. So let's name the angles. <coughs> A, B. It's at A and B here. These are the, oh my gosh. I can start A and B here. Then I say C, D, E. So describe, oh, there's an angle here. Oof, nearly forget that one, F. So A and B are right angles. Who can tell me what type of angle C is? Pay attention, everybody. Some of you are making your name in the chat. Who can, who can tell me what type of angle this is? It's greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. So C is obtuse d is less than 90 degrees so d is acute how much marks two marks so i feel this is enough e is another obtuse remember it's internal so it's the angle inside of the shape e is obtuse and don't forget f what what is f F is, F is, this is not obtuse, this is not acute, it's not smaller, acute is smaller than 90, obtuse is between 90 and 180, so uh, obtuse will be like this, this one goes all the way back, and it's, it's flexing all the way back like that, it's a reflex, F is reflex. So I believe with that, We should be good to go. Let's go on to our last question. Is this our last question? Ethan and Mia or Maya participated in bowling tournament, in a bowling tournament consisting of four rounds. The incomplete table below shows their scores. Medals are given based on the average score of the four rounds. Bronze, silver, gold. Okay, I understand. It's time to go. It's time to play. So, Ethan, this is Ethan. You're not supposed to be playing Roblox and thing right now. No, not Roblox. Maybe once a week. You could get a little play here and there. But I, how many of you all stopped playing games? Type, I stopped. If you stop playing games right now. No more Minecraft and Roblox and whatever other game will be playing. Because right now you're focusing on exams, right? M 
I mean, that's given based on the average score of the four rounds, so or oh, some rounds missing. Oh, you know what is missing? The question. I have to go one more slide to see what is the question. What is the minimum score that Eaton should obtain in the round four to qualify for a gold medal? Eaton is going for gold. Based on the average score of the four rounds. Well, if Eaton wants to get a gold medal, he has to make at least 121 average. So after four rounds, the total is always the number of items or number of rounds times the mean. So the mean times the rounds. And his mean that he must make is 121. 121 times four, who can do that mentally? Four, eight, four, four, eight, four. Yeah, so real people stop playing games. Now is not the time to be playing too much games. So if you're still playing real games now, you're really playing games. <laughs> you need to go, you need to go and watch yourself in the mirror after this and say you need to stop playing games. Because you're playing too much games. So 484 is the total. And we're going to start so far. So let's see. No, that's the total. Let's see how much he has so far. So I like to make use of this word, this phrase, so far. So far, 120, 105, 115. 5 and 5 is 10. Bring across the 1, 1, 1. And, so that's 4. I'm adding really fast here. Are you keeping up with me? 340. So far, that's how much he has so far. So what he needs? He needs, I'm just trying to squeeze in my weekend any way I can do it. I'm running out of space. 484 plus, oh, minus, minus the 340. <clears throat> and what we got? Four. Four. One. This man needs to score 144 points in this round to make it work. Wow. We, un we understand that? So he needs 144 points in this round so that he can achieve an average of 121, which would earn him the gold medal. Is there a final, final question? Mia's total score was 460. A score in round three was two times a score in round four. What was Mia? I think it's Mia. <laughs> I think it's Mia. What was Mia's? Score in round three. So Mia's total score was 60. Her score in round three was two times her score in round four. Let's do this so far thing. So her total is 460. So far, how much points does she have? 110 and 95. We all gotta add that up mentally. So far, she has 110 and 95. Five. 0, 1, 205 points so far. And so missing, how much points is missing? How much does she need for these two rounds? 460 minus 205 is how much? Well, I know 5 from 60 is 55, and 2 from 4 is 255, right? So this is how much points. And this has to go for round 3 and round 4. But in round three, she scored two times as much as round four. What am I doing? I'm doing unequal share in the block method. Unequal. I'll do the shout outs after the question. So wait, hang out, hang around people. So round three, round four. So how many parts is this? Three parts equal two, five, five. So one part, this is the block method, unequal sharing, two, five, five divided by three. How good are you all in unequal sharing? Rate your unequal sharing skills out of 10. So let's see how much time three can go into this. Three can go into 25 eight times. That's true. And three can go into 15. So we have 85. So what was the score in round three? Each one of these blocks um, count for 85. Round three is 85 times three. I'm looking at these scores. I'm seeing a lot of eights. Some fives. 85 times 2. Well, 80 times 2 is 160. So 85 times 2 has to be 170. 
Did we just finish the last question in the paper? Oh, yes. If you were here from start to finish, type start to finish. If you were here from start to finish, type I was here from start to finish. This was a beautiful class. You all were excellent. I love working um, all these questions with you because you guys are so quick with it. And you all keep the class very entertaining. Um, start to finish. Yeah, lots of people here from start to finish. So next week is the same time, you know. And then the next week, 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 and we keep going. There may be about 12 of these, or 11 or 12 of these. Um, since I'm seeing some people need help with unequal sharing, we may dedicate one of the middle weeks for just unequal sharing or for fractions or something like that. And we are about to come to a close, so I need you all to press like on all the videos. And let's begin one minute of shout out. Let's see how fast I can do this. Remember to put your name, um, Christian, Hannah, Judah, Big Up, Dinsley, Chin City, Life with Jojo, Lana, Crystal, Jaheem, Ayende, Hannah, Ronnie, Aria, Jishel, Jessica, Liam, Sadia, the whole crew, Juliana, Kimani, Vidan, Janelle, Janaya, Jaheem, all the warriors, Jumak, Neko, Lulu Unicorns, Akila, you all need to fix some of these names, Quinn, Crystal, Alessia, Alessia, Christian, Nick, Kill, who I shout out a hundred times already, Elijah, everybody. Remember, let me just put in the money screens if you have any parents here, if you all need to join classes. Um, some of the benefits of the classes is that these papers that I do on Sunday, we give it to the class during the week to do. Along with, you get an additional session where we work through different topics. And those are Google Meet sessions. So. More personal session. So 472 my um 422 and Matt's more that still I say minus here. 472 one Don't call the number. WhatsApp. WhatsApp if you need to join any classes for primary, secondary, and organize yourself. Um Jerry, Kiz, Kizel, Ashley. All right. So what you all do is bring a friend next time. Um the state that I'm in here is cold and dry so i'm drying and cracking up here so i'm i'm gonna try and um fix that <laughs> love and blessings i will see you all next week i will be here next week i'll be in trinidad next week so we'll be able to get a nice session in hi samara josiah arita Jorel, jubilee jabari jessica sky zavion um, shamaya akim Makia, emmanuel so I'll get some of you all on the shout out. Bye, Kishav. Um, Eden, I'll get some of you all on the shout out next time. Love and blessings, everybody. The stream is coming to an end in five, four,